Hi, I'm Nico. Thank you for tuning in. Today we are outside of my apartment. First, because I can. And second, because this is a video about street photography. So what better place to do this than in the streets? In this video, I'm going to look at the two main ways that I can think of, of being a street photographer. And those are the fisherman or the hunter. Are you fishing for pictures, being very static with your frame ready and you snap when the right person walks into the frame? Or are you the hunter that just walks around prowling with a camera ready to react to whatever life throws at you? So in this video, we're gonna follow me shooting in both styles and we're gonna look at the images. And then later we'll like just dig into my archives and look at pictures taken with both techniques, compare them and see what are the strengths and the weaknesses of each technique. It's gonna be cool. The first thing that uh, caught my eye was those uh, scooters being parked in the light. Well, the left part of my frame is gonna be darker. It's nice dramatic light and those e-scooters, they're a fixture of urban environments these days. So I thought, why not? It might be worth capturing. What's happening now is that I have seen from far away that there is a guy in a wheelchair approaching and this becomes my ID, the juxtaposition of the wheelchair and the e-scooters, two very different modes of transportation, so that can be the tension on which my picture is going to work. But suddenly there's a surprise, the guy with the dog that seemed to be walking away decides to turn around and rush into my picture again. So I just had time to adjust my focus and capture the moment where their eyes meet. Unfortunately, I don't think the wheelchair is very readable in that picture, so I'm not satisfied. I took another picture a fraction of a second later, and this time I get the wheelchair, the scooters, and the dog. My ID is there. Of course, the person is still there, so I'm still going to photograph him. And I'm going to wait for him to come back into the light. I didn't quite wait long enough, and I captured it a bit dark. This is my original ID, but it doesn't really work. Now that I got my picture, I'm simply going to walk away. I've don't think anything better is going to come. Now let me show you something that's available all around the world, a back alley that's uh, crossing with the main street. You can use it as a framing device to get the sort of a frame within a frame vibe going on. I took a first picture to check my exposure and then waited for something to happen. There's a person is making eye contact with me, there's my picture. Of course I could have stayed longer and waited for a better person to walk by, but this is the idea. The next spot where I decided to throw my line and fish was the, the, this little square with the nice uh, cherry tree blossoms. I chose this uh, location and framing because of the leading lines, those two paths converging were really strong compositional elements. I captured this guy because he had a green bag that's reminiscent of the color of the grass. Another option that was available was to put the character on the left hand side where the, all those leading lines converged. So I took both versions. Now let's switch to hunting. You can see the camera is mobile. I'm walking around and looking at things. I noticed this guy was so much taller than his friend and I'm thinking Diane Arbus right away. But as you can see, I've been made. He's looking at me. He's wondering what I'm looking at. You have to like control your nerves and keep looking. Pretend that you're interested in something that, that's outside of the frame. Pretend you're not looking at them. Now I've been waiting for them to pass me, so they're turning their back again and I get back to work because I want to get the picture, it's like a Diana scene. Now I even have the gesture, he's looking over the shoulder of his friend, it's, he's not simply being a taller man, he's actually demonstrating that tallness in a gesture, that's the kind of picture you want to get. Now I feel like I got the picture, so I'm going to walk away to my next subject. Okay, this next segment was actually shot in 2014, I think, but uh, it's relevant to the point I'm making today. So here I am hunting for pictures. I'm on a dock waiting to board a ferry uh, some, somewhere just outside of Oslo. I have noticed these two kids. You can't really see them in the video because it's so dark, but they are like two punk kids and they look very in love and very excited as teenagers sometimes get. So I have adjusted my exposure for the shade and I'm focused on them and now I'm just waiting for a good gesture. He's sitting down on her lap, which I really love, so I capture a picture of that. Then I can't remember the circumstances, but apparently I pretended to look away for a second, but I quickly came back to them and waited for the next gesture. Maybe I checked my screen for the picture. And now he's about to do something really cool that only kids could think of. He's uh, lifting her shirt. So quickly, I capture a picture of that and this one is really nice. 
Now I feel like I have the picture, so I don't need to work the scene much longer. I'm gonna make my way to the front of the queue so I can board the ferry quick. The ferry crossing lasted about 20 minutes uh, and I took more pictures of the kids uh, during that crossing because they sat on the outside deck and again he sat on a lab and it was really cool. Here's the picture. This turned out to be one of my favorite pictures of 2014 and uh, the only one of these kids that I printed. Okay, now it's time to look in my archives and uh, first we're going to look at pictures that I made in the fishing style of street photography. A quick word about the pros and cons of fishing for photographs in street photography. It's easier if you're shy. You will get made and confronted much less often if you're fishing for photos rather than hunting. On the flip side, you have less control on your content because you are uh, tied to luck and the people who randomly walk into the frame you've prepared. Fishing will lead to cleaner compositions because you have time to polish your photograph before you take it. On the flip side, you better nail it technically. There will be no excuses for uh, slanted horizons, uh, converging lines, uh, fuzzy focus. You had time to prepare your picture. Fishing will lead you to a more homogeneous style because you came to each picture from an aesthetic point of view. You chose the aesthetic before you chose the subject. So this will lead to a homogeneous series. The risk, and it's a big risk, is that you're gonna start looking for scenes that already look like photographs. This is something that's painfully obvious when looking at uh, street photographers on social media, on YouTube, is they walk around and look for scenes that already look like photographs that they know. A uh, light crossing through shadow, a symmetrical building or bridge. And if you keep on doing that, it's a vicious circle that's gonna kill your creativity because there's no more surprise in your work. You come out of the house looking for stuff that already looks like the photographs that you're making. It's a bit sad, I think. The last point about fishing, and it's great, is that it works with any camera. There's been people like uh, Sternfeld or uh, Meyerowitz doing uh, fishing in street photography with 8x10 cameras, heavy cameras on tripods. You don't need a discreet, small, fast, out of focus camera to be a fisher. So in the first example, there was this uh, stray ray of light that illuminated that statue's penis. It's a really fun situation. Then it was just a matter of waiting for the right character to come complete the frame. And what happened after a few minutes is that lady came in, not only wearing the right color, red, and standing in the right place in the frame to mirror the statue, but most importantly, doing the right gesture. Because she is like looking into the screen of a camera and away from the statue, this picture becomes a story of how by focusing on something inwards, she is missing the funny thing that's happening in the outside world. Which brings us to a point I should have made earlier in a video about street photography. The gesture is everything. A picture of somebody walking is not satisfying. You need a gesture that speaks to the rest of the frame. Like the way that I had to wait for somebody to really look away from the dress and look to be ignoring it. Here the car is parked, but I had to wait for uh, somebody to pass by and give this gesture that makes it look like the car is following them. It was not. Here, this picture only works, and it barely works, because the guy holding his hand in his back is making an X, and with the red pants, we have a red X mimicking the one on the poster. Here, to get the impression of cold and desolation of that winter picture, we need the, we need the gesture of the dog and the man. The man is ready to go home, he's had enough, the dog wants to hang longer. The last two examples um, are, is pictures that I've fished for, but I made them look like hunting. Here I was ready with the Chrysler building in the sky a long time before that guy came. But the only thing that can make this picture interesting is the fact that he's holding his newspaper with two hands in his back. A picture of a guy simply walking and turning his back would not have been interesting, would not have been a keeper. You need the gesture. It's capital whether you're fishing or hunting. Okay, and um, now let's look at the hunting photographs and uh, what is different about them. Let's do it. So again, let's go over the pros and cons. Hunting can be done anywhere and in any light because it is subject driven and not aesthetically driven. You just need something you're interested in and you're good to go. It is harder for shy people because you get made and caught a lot more when you're hunting for pictures. And in some places in the world, it seems like they spend their whole day waiting to catch someone taking their photograph. You will get made like basically for every shot you take, but they're usually very friendly. 
When you're hunting, you're fully in control of the subject. You don't have to wait for someone to walk into a frame. You walk up to someone that you want to photograph. So the series you're going to produce are going to be much more homogeneous in theme because you're a person and you have your own interests and your own taste. In the long term, it will come out in your work that you are always drawn to the same kind of people and that your pictures tend to say or talk about the same kind of topic. For that first picture, I was walking around on the dock. It is uh, the fall, it was pretty cold, and I catch this guy. Again, look at the gesture. I waited to capture him when he looks like he's shivering and surrounded by his friends holding umbrellas. He looks cold. Let's spread it a bit thick about the theme because when you're hunting, your theme is going to come through in the long term. My theme, if I had to put it into words, is people doing it their own way. People who do not conform to the norm that you can see around them. People who see things that challenge your expectations. Uh, as a result, I often end up photographing younger people, but it's not a rule. I'm also interested in adults you know, acting out like kids. You can see that this picture is technically very poor. It's taking through the window of a moving vehicle. And that's what I was saying when I meant that if you're fishing, your pictures better be technically perfect. But if you're hunting, you'll get a pass. Here we have a picture of three kids who tricked the mom into carrying all their backpacks. It's easier, I find, to express humor through hunted pictures rather than uh, fished pictures. Because life really randomly gives you a moment of humor coming into your frame. But if you're out and you look for it, you can find it. Uh, last example is the great uh, mimetism between the owner and the dog. Here I got doubly made. You can see that they both saw me to take the picture, but I think I said something about, oh, you have such a cute dog, and I went ahead and took the picture anyway. Okay, that was it for today. I hope this was useful to you. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'll talk to you some other time about another topic. Cheers.